Eric Kripke, you're the showrunner for The Boys, uh, which is a superhero series about a raging celebrity narcissist draped in the American flag who occasionally allies with Nazis in pursuit of personal power. So first off, uh, where do you come up with these far-fetched <laughs> outlandish ideas? Crazy, right? <laughs> it's just where do you even get them? Um, uh, I was very lucky. I mean, The Boys is based on a comic book written by Garth Ennis. It was written well over 10 years ago. And uh, when I had my very first dinner with Garth, you know, I was trying to get in his head as I was adapting it. And I said, you know, what inspired you? And he said, you know, and by the way, this was late 2015 or, you know, early 2016, maybe. And and he said, I was really interested in what would happen if you crossed the worst of celebrity with the worst of politics and how bad that would screw over the common man. And and at that point, before there was an election in 2016, even at that point, I remember saying, like, what a crazy idea. Like, you know, what a wild science fiction idea. And then um, the world, you know, caught up to this show in a in a very real way and it's you know it's a responsibility we get to um really talk about like the exact second we've been living in um which i'm grateful for but um but it's bad for the world i would rather have the world be better and my show be boring than 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 to have it be like you know about how we're getting ruined by misinformation and 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 authoritarians who know how to present as celebrities. Uh, and as, as you mentioned, it is based on a comic book series. Uh, and, and I know there are, you know, it, you know, differences between the series and the comic books as they were as they were written and published. How do you decide, you know, what to stick with from the comic book and where to kind of go your own way and adapt it to, to where you want the story to go? Um, it's, it's super stressful. Uh, I do it with an incredible amount of sleeplessness and angst. Um, cause like I come at it as a fan and you feel the responsibility of like, I'm going to be the guy who ruins the thing that I love for the world. Uh, I'm going to be that guy. And that's really stressful. Um, I mean, I, I think our choice, our decision gets made sort of easy for us because uh, The Boys is actually, as a comic, is actually fairly procedural. Um, like it would have been really good on like an X-rated CBS. Um, but, you know, the, the necessity of streaming on Amazon is that it has to be serialized heavily. Um, so by that very nature alone, because none of those stories in the comics would stretch over the eight hours that I needed them to. So we every season have to come up with our own story. Um, but what I try to do is I try to create this framework and then I like plug in the moments that I love um, from from the books. And generally fans of the books are happy because I think more than anything, we just try to get the characters in the tone right. And, and my feeling is like, as long as we get that right, I think they're okay with, you know, a pretty big deviation story. And yeah, it, it's often a very funny series, um, but also very dark in places. And and the satire of it, as you mentioned, commenting on, on where the world is, uh, is like, there's a kind of like angry kind of, uh, uh, commentary on on the, the current events in there. How do you balance that? Like, you know, keep the humor in there without losing the without losing the satire and and, and vice versa. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I think one the boys more than anything I've ever done is sort of like my specific sense of humor. So I think I have like a pretty good um, instrument of knowing when it goes too far or not far enough. Um, yeah, I would say like it's satirical and angry because, you know, I would say the writers are a little angry. Um, and, you know, and I count among my favorite movies, stuff like Network and Brazil and like, you know, movies that are angry. Um, but I would say I don't know if it's the humor that makes it somehow uh, uh, not feel like unrelentingly grim. I think we intentionally put like a lot of heart into it. Um, it's not just this kind of nihilistic death march. It's it's you know, my worldview is never trust anyone in authority, but take care of the person next to you. 
and and the characters in the show genuinely love each other and and all, not all of them but many of them try to do the right thing um and i think that gives it like a little bit of hope and emotion and and makes you feel for those characters and i think that takes you know the curse off some of the you know the more acidic uh, parts of the show yeah and it helps uh you know as, as you mentioned having those characters at the heart of it who are sort of like an entry point into it like huey um who who really kind of give us a grounding place where the audience can kind of relate um and and having those characters who you know give you that sense of you know the world is insane and the world is a mess but individual humans can still be good like is, right. is that sort of the part of what you want to bring to it yeah no that's exactly right uh uh you don't uh, uh generals don't win wars uh uh you know scared and tired people in foxholes win wars by trying to take care of their brother next to them and 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 the world is never saved by big heroic gestures anyone who claims that they are is trying to sell you something um you know the world is saved by countless boring tiny little moments of grace um and and they don't make front page news and and they're not you know something that people worship but that's that's what in at least in my view real goodness you know real goodness is and 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 don't trust the people that are trying to come in anyone who comes in and says in front of you like i'm going to save you it's up to me to save you like run in the other direction from that guy that's the that's a big message for the show um and on a, from a technical standpoint the series um you know ha makes great use of visual effects and because of the nature of the violence on the show a lot of those visual effects are are incredibly like grisly and creatively so uh i wonder what the process is behind the scenes of saying okay well homelander's laser beam eyes will eviscerate the person this way and and and, and kind of creating that um, it comes from, I mean, obviously it's a lot of conversation um, and Stefan Fleet, who's our VFX supervisor, has an incredible creative hand in it. I, you know, I would say he's sort of the VFX director of the show. Um, so he'll come up with, frankly, the majority of the ideas um, and then help us sort of execute them. I mean, we have a guiding light of, of what's the most realistic application you know for as crazy and over the top as the show is and sometimes we have crazy stuff like you know driving broadside to a whale and whatever but like in terms of their powers we actually do a lot of research into what would really happen if someone got you know sliced up by a high-powered laser at close range um because our whole point is is it takes place in the real world and if and and superman shooting is you know, laser eyes at somebody in the w real world is not going to be pretty. Like, it's going to be a horrific situation, just like if the flash ran through a human being. Like, so, so part of the show uh, of what we always say is like, what's the, what's the most ruthlessly realistic version of something we can pull off? And, and, and that usually, because superheroes are inherently absurd, it usually pushes us, you know, to a pretty, you know, absurd and sometimes horrifying place. Like, there is a there is an analysis of this show which is it's it's the horror movie version of superheroes um and i think you know and i think that that probably plays into the aesthetic sometimes it feels um this might be a more depressing way to to think of it from my perspective but like it feels less like a horror movie version of superheroes than what if superheroes were real and just layer that over the exact reality we have right now in in like you know you know our our institutions as they currently are no that that's and that's absolutely i mean that's absolutely what it is but what it would that would be a horror movie like that would like, be horror. Like the worst thing we could possibly do as people is is like invent superheroes for real and and i think we're just trying yes like look are we sort of taking the piss out of you know the meat you know all the superhero media and all you know and it's it's the most popular genre in the world right now and it's sort of taken over the world and yes we're puncturing that but i think we're also making the point of um you just you don't want authoritarians with that much power you just you just it would be really really bad for humanity in the world and 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 i think the show says that we all we really do is we try to present like our world the best we can and we add like just this one slippery banana which is there's this 
little chemical called compound V that makes you superheroes. And if you take it and everything else logically is our society that has to extrapolate from that. Um, you know, no, every time a writer pitches me something that's like a little science fiction or someone's cruising around on like a, a jet pack or whatever, I'm like, no, that's not what, that's not in our world. You can't look out the window and see that. Like we're only allowed this one little thing. And then we have to say, all right, now what would these real, if these heroes were real and in our society, what kind of havoc would they wreak? Uh, well, I want to congratulate you on the show, uh, on season two, on season three, moving into a new political reality that we are currently in. I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, uh, the show evolves with uh, with the times. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, no, we'll thank you. you. Back for an hour, and we'll bring you back for our group discussion a little later. Okay, great. Thank you. This was fun.